I'd like to now welcome uh, Andreas Link, the president of the Canadian Society for Ecological Economics. He's going to offer some opening remarks, and then we'll hear from Mila Sanal. Wow, what an act to follow. Uh, many Heitschkas, indeed. Thank you all very much for coming uh, to rethink economics for a healthy environment. This uh, event is especially touching for me. Uh, we have my mentor in ecological economics, Peter Victor, but also uh, Canada's environmental compass, um, David Suzuki. And of course, many special guests. Uh, and we're grappling at the, the key uh, issue of our time. How can ecological, social, and economic systems work together to benefit both nature and people? We have quite a job ahead of us. But this is what uh, our organization, Canadian Society for Ecological Economics, or CAN-C, does. We are students, teachers, public servants, uh, the nonprofit sector, sustainable entrepreneurs, trying to realize a truly sustainable future. Now, this keynote is um, the uh, event that kicks off our first joint North American conference. Uh, will be held at UBC, the theme, Pathways for Change Towards a Just and Sustainable Economy. That begins tomorrow. Uh, tonight's conference then moves there uh, from then till Sunday. So it's the first time we've worked with the U.S. Society as well as David Suzuki Foundation, and uh, we are very thankful for making these new connections. A conference, uh, much like tonight, brings different perspectives, uh, discussing real cross-section of ideas uh, from the great transition that's needed, redefining progress for society, social and environmental justice, energy, food systems, indigenomics, and these are only a few of those topics. I think we all learn by this dialogue. Uh, with the exchange of ideas, we grow as people. The two organizations work to advance the study and practice of ecological economics, which integrates the management of nature's household, or ecology, and humankind's household, or economics. So I'm going to stop there. I'm very happy um, uh, to get this thing started and, um, and uh, to help in a little way to make this possible. So thank you all for coming. Okay, so how many people here have grandkids? Can I see a show of hands? How about just kids, regular kids? Or anybody here, anybody here that would consider themselves a kid? <laughs> There's an important generational aspect to the conversation that we're going to have tonight. And uh, with David Suzuki, we wanted to hear from somebody who's going to have to live with the consequences of a lot of the decisions that we make over the next few years. So I wanted to bring up uh, Mila Sanal, who's going to offer her own perspective on the questions that we're facing tonight from the perspective of somebody even younger than I. Is Mila back there? I'm not going to make you stand behind this lectern because no one will see you. Thank you. Ever since I was little, I've loved exploring. I've loved beaches and tide pools, looking under rocks for animal life, and walking in the forest. Being in nature makes me feel content, and it is such an important part of my life. When we live in such a gorgeous place in the world, it is easy to take what we have for granted. It's possible to push out of our minds the problems that our planet faces today. But we can't afford to. This year, I had an experience that made me really think about what the future might hold if we don't take better care of our environment. In March, there was a chemical fire at the port of Vancouver. It filled the air in my neighborhood with chemicals and smoke. It stung my eyes and my throat, and I wasn't able to walk home from school because of it. I didn't feel safe outside in the air. Although this was a temporary situation, I felt afraid because it made me think. Wemsith th was our new reality. Wems if we pushed our planet too far. What would it be like to live in, in a world instead of nature inspiring us? It made us scared and doubtful. A hope that we never know. As without clean air to breathe, healthy soil, and safe water, Nothing else really matters. But I worry 
because our planet faces huge problems. Our impact on the Earth makes me wonder about the future of my generation and my children. I worry about things like climate change, global warming, our polar ice caps melting, GMO foods, and global food so shortages with our growing population, our depleting ozone layer, the loss of forests and natural resources, habitat and biodiversity loss, fish and animal populations dying, and pollution and toxins in our water, air, and soil. It is so overwhelming to think of issues like these. But what I don't understand is why is it so hard to change some of our practices? When there's plastic floating like islands in the ocean, in our landfills, and washing up on our beaches, why are we still producing plastic bags and adding plastic noodles to toiletries? Why can't we just say no? This doesn't make sense anymore. I know you are here because you care, but I challenge you to do all you can. Be open to changing practices. Be creative and be brave. Be the one to stand up to everyone and fight for what makes sense. In your meetings and discussions and decisions, please do not compromise. There should be no compromises when it comes to our environment. Work together and find long-term situations that are good for our whole planet and our future. Please remember that my generation and those to come will inherit the results of your decision. So you must make good ones. We all deserve the chance to live a healthy life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mila. I want to bring up now one of the elders from my community and one of the foremost science educators that this country's ever seen. Dr. David Suzuki is going to join us to throw down his challenge. Uh, now, David um, is a geneticist by training. He's also the host, as you know, of The Nature of Things. But he's somebody who, aside from his CBC career, has never had a problem standing up, as Mila said, for what makes sense, or uh, indeed fighting passionately for, for social justice. David, um, <clears throat> David's gonna offer us his challenge in 15 minutes for how to rethink the entire economic paradigm that we've basically grown up living and breathing and swimming in like fish. So this might push your wig back a little bit, 